Jimmy Johnson, driver of the number 84 Advent Health Toyota this weekend here at Kansas Speedway. Jimmy, thanks so much for spending some time with us. Um, we'll go ahead and go to questions. If you have a question for Jimmy, raise your hand. We'll get a mic to you, and we'll start up front with Zach. Zach Sterniello, NASCAR.com. Jimmy, getting back on the car uh, for consecutive weeks now, and um, just on a little bit more of a regular basis these last couple of weeks, how much does that help you adjust to finding the right feel that you need behind the wheel? Yeah, it's really helped me inside the car, and I look forward to expanding on that. Uh, this weekend and then coming back for the 600 and a lot more mile and a half in general that I'll run this year. Um, I know it doesn't show it now, but being around and being in the car, I think is going to really help our competition department as well. Um, this year has been more challenging for us in a lot of ways than we anticipated. Um, but I do think we're, we're getting closer to the consistent um, pace that we we hope to have and should have week in and week out so uh, there's there's a real evolution taking place right now and I'm I'm hopeful that we can really show that on track this weekend as a group can you elaborate on on how it's been a little bit more challenging than you guys anticipated and kind of where you guys are as a, as a whole yeah I mean it's it's tough to change manufacturers uh, we have amazing support from Toyota great collaboration and partnership working with them but um the off season is short. You know, we're a small team. Um, our resources have had, you know, our people have had a, uh, you know, a lot more work items on the list than we have minutes or hours in the day or the week. So, uh, but we're, we're systematically working through it all um, and, and growing as a company. So um, it's, it's tough to just compete with Gibbs and Hendrick and, and all these big teams. Um, but, you know, we're, we're making steps forward weekly and, and makes sense about the future. Dustin Albino, Jay Ski. Uh, obviously, Jason Burdett had a ton of success with Junior Motorsports in the Xfinity Series, and now obviously is with you. W what's it been like working with him uh, this year? It's been great. Jason and I uh, started together on the 48 car. He was my car chief uh, back in 2002. And I've always kept a close eye on him. We've always had a great friendship. Um, this is a new, you know, his, his real first attempt at next gen racing. So there are a lot of new things he's dealing with as am I. But his leadership um, certainly helps within our walls of the race team. And then, you know, I think I'm at nine cup races. So the other events in his weekly duties uh, to help the other two teams, um, you know, is, is quite helpful. So um, it's been a, been a great fit. And, you know, we're, we're more focused on today and, you know, being in the car and the competition aspect that we have and, and uh, you know, Dover was more of a challenge than we had hoped. Uh, there were a few bright spots, but certainly more of a challenge than we hoped. And uh, excited for this weekend. Yep. All right, Lee. Lee Spencer, Sirius XM NASCAR Radio and CatchFence.com. Um, kind of curious, Eric, you could tell, was just chomping at the bit, whether he was hurt or not. I mean, he, his leg, his arms, everything could have been in traction, and he, he wanted to get back in that car, right? How did you convince him, just, you know, give it another week and, and let yourself heal? You'll be better off in the long run because he's a young guy. Yeah, I don't envy his position, but I, I really do appreciate um, – his willingness to hear us out. Um, you know, it's, it's not a fun process, and as far as he's concerned, he, he should have never missed a race. You know, he's just, just eager and ready to do it, and and that's, you know, I've, I've played hurt before, so I get it, and I'm seeing both sides of it. My concern is, you know, we're at a fast track, and an impact like that could happen again, and is his body really ready for that? Um, and that's that's kind of the question that, he came to his own answer on and, and realized that, you know, it's probably early. And, and so that's, that's really where we are. And there's a lot of other bits and pieces that, that led to that. But ultimately, it, he feels great. He's moving around really well. He was able to get in the gym and, and exercise. But, you know, to, to really take a shot that could happen here at this place, um, it's, it's just early. So um, hopefully next week's the week. You know, we're still kind of working through the steps as it goes. And I know it's confusing on Tuesday. We have to name who's in the car. But we don't have um, the approval process with doctors until Thursday. So hopefully um, within NASCAR, they can get that stuff synced up a little better so it doesn't create all the waves that it does. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, we'll work through it again next week and, and um, 
see how his progress goes, but I'm, I'm hopeful he's back in sooner than later. Yep. All right, we have a question right here. Thank you. Harry Loomis, the podium finish. Uh, Jimmy, talking about Eric, um, given that this is a transition year for Legacy Motor Club going to Toyota, with him being your, um, your kind of your veteran driver on the team, with him missing at least two races, potentially more, given it week to week, um, how does it change your expectations uh, for the team through the rest of the year? Yeah, missing a race truly takes us out of an opportunity to make the playoffs on points. Um, so if it's one race, and this is part of our conversation with Eric, if it's one race, two races, three races that he misses, um, that window unfortunately closes, and it's really about winning a race. Um, so when he's back in the seat, um, it's not that we never wanted to win, but it just really gives us that one lane of making the playoffs. And, and we really feel like um, Eric on points would have been um, able to make it in the top 16. So I hate that that opportunity is closed for him, certainly for our team and for our partners, but um, th it's not over. You know, we can still win a race and Eric's very capable of winning, uh, winning races. We just need to get everything under him. And uh, hopefully we can do that as you know, the summer gets here and, and uh, get him in on, wa on a waiver. All right, any final questions? Okay, we'll go up front here. TrailAisleFrontChurch.com. Jimmy, what did you see from Corey last week? Obviously, fill it, you know, kind of hard circumstances for your cup debut, but he seemed to perform well last week, and then obviously he's he's back in the car this week. Yeah, Corey has done a great job. I think us naming him as our backup driver to start the year um, has given us as a group time to get to know each other. Um, he's doing sim work for us, so he's in our system. We know him. And, you know, I've been able to, to watch him and uh, been impressed with the questions that he asks, how he's able to uh, communicate and articulate what he's feeling and experiencing um, in a concise manner. And then to roll that all up into last weekend and to be able to see more of that. You know, without a doubt, he's a guy that's not afraid to stand on the gas, but this job is more than that. And to see him really um, work in those other facets interacting with the team, taking care of partners. Um, you know, at a young age, he's, he's well-rounded, and I think he has a very bright future, and um, you know, he's excited to be here this weekend, and um, hopefully he can get a good result. Thanks.